spending time as the beach recently, trying to fill it up. Visitor numbers to the southern French coast are down by 20% so far this summer, the drop largely due to absent foreigners. Come on, it's holiday time, hot as hell, perfect for the beach and the sustaining of western values, get with the program. On my most recent visit, the mistral wind blew. Some families had put up windbreaks, and, nearby, another was attempting to do so with the sort of incompetence the which suggested they were working to French government guidelines. The break blew up words and off, the children disappeared and needed fetching back, leaving mum and grandma holding the structure and almost flying away with it. Long minutes passed and still the break flapped gaily, like reviews those lines of flags across the Himalayan hillsides. The family would have maybe done better had they not all been laughing uncontrollably. This proved contagious. Everyone around was laughing, too. It seemed to them make no difference that the adult young woman, the mum, I assumed, wore a burkini, covering her top to toe but with a face free. And the older lady, Grandma, was enshrouded under perhaps several dozen layers. We were all absolutely on the same side, windbreak-wise. And how, I wondered later, might this state of affairs would have been improved if a fully clothed policeman had barged in upon it, insisting the younger lady change into something skimpier, or pay a 32 pounds fine? I think everyone might have been tempted to ask the policeman, just who the devil do you think you are? And how is the measure to be policed? In what does a significant detail burkini differ from a wetsuit? What of other women who prefer to be covered? My Welsh grandmother went to the beach as she went to church, including hat with hat pin. For it could be windy at Pendine, too. You'd have needed a company of sass to get her out of her coat, never mind into a swimsuit. Thus spake upon piles idiocy idiocy. Shortly, I shall go to the beach at Cannes dressed as the Archbishop of Canterbury. Haul me in, Mr. Meyer.